What is going on guys? Welcome to the first ever two minute course review. We are going to use these to quickly go through things like the vibe of the course, some interesting facts, the conditions, some of my favorite holes. Try to wrap it up real quick for you guys so you can get a sense of what it's like to go play there and maybe go check it out for yourself or not check it out for yourself if it sucks. Today we are talking about Dormy Club just outside Pioneers, North Carolina. Dormy Club was built by Corn Crenshaw, the fathers of modern golf design. They have a minimalist aesthetic and they've done places like Ozarks National, Friars Head, Stream Song, some really great world renowned courses. Dormy Club is no different. It's got a lot of those vibes and on some holes you can feel like there's nothing else going on in the world. Some interesting facts about Dormy Club. It was built in 2010 but fell on some financial hardships and then it was rescued by the Dormy Network a few years back. They currently don't have a clubhouse at Dormy Club. It's just a trailer but they are building a really nice one as well as a bunch of bungalows for members to stay on site while they're there. But that doesn't change the fact that they are all about the service. They will bring you anything you want on the golf course. Just give them a call and they'll run it out to you. There's also no OB at Dormy Club, which is amazing for someone like me who sprays it a bit off the tee. There are some wet areas where you can lose a ball in the woods or in some marsh and water. But besides that, everything's in play. And you can ground your club in every bunker because they consider them all waste areas. Also the cart pass, they have dirt road feel to them, but they actually have concrete laid underneath them so that they can maintain their shape, which I thought was a really nice touch to add to the natural aesthetic. Let's talk about the vibe. This place is all about the golf. Everyone there knows about the course. Everyone there loves golf. And it's really the only thing you can do while you're there. It's amazing. Couldn't be more laid back for a private course, but everyone there was super nice. Wanted you to have fun and all they cared about you was having a good time. Let's talk about the course and the conditions. The place is in really great shape. There was a couple greens that were getting some work done. Besides that, I loved every bit of it. This place is par 71, tons of really wide fairways and greens that have so much movement in them. These can provide for a lot of really fun putts and short game challenges. And there's something about the aesthetic, the rugged landscape cut in against the red pine needles and the tall pine trees. It really is beautiful. Some of my favorite holes, number three is a short par four that goes downhill before coming back up with a cross bunker that makes you think twice. And the green's got like nine different tiers, which makes the approach really fun. Number eight is a big par four, it's like 450, but there's a big speed slot. So you hit a good drive, you'll end up about 50 yards closer, but it still left me with a five iron about 200 yards into a really long green complex. Number 10 is a monster of a par five, 630 yards. And on the approach, there's a principal's nose bunker that makes you really think twice of where you're gonna hit that shot. You can try to go left of it, but then you bring more of the trouble into play. You go right to the bailout, then you're still gonna have 200 yards into the green. And number 17 gets your attention right away. It's a par five. It has a lot of inspiration from number two at Pine Valley. Not that I've ever played, but anyone wants to invite me, I'm down. It's a risk reward hole. You can get there in two, but the second shot is probably about 50 feet uphill. It has a huge waste area that really makes you think twice about whether or not you're gonna go for it. Now for the price. We're always gonna start with beer prices because that's constant across every course. I don't actually know what it was for a single beer, but I got beer and a little thing of beef jerky and it cost me 14 bucks. So not the cheapest in the world, especially compared to some of the other North Carolina courses where you can get a beer for 250. I think it depends how you book it, but the green fees will run you between 125 and 250 as a guest. At the end, I had a ton of fun playing this course. It's the type of place that I could personally play every single day because it's wide and forgiving, but offers tons of variation and creativity around the greens. If you have a chance while you're in the Pioneers area, definitely get this course on your list. It's well worth it. Thanks for watching this two minute review, even though it wasn't quite two minutes. If you enjoyed these kind of reviews, please consider hitting the like button and the subscribe button below. It really helps justify to my wife that I spent all this time making this content for something that's just a hobby right now. Thanks again for tuning in. See you guys soon.